Francisco, thank goodness, after so long. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the reasons for that growth in Oakland is our next speaker. Uh, she recently came back from China and did a people-to-people, first-hand observation of what is going on in China. That is the kind of thing that we need more of. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'd like very much to welcome our friend, oh, Mayor of Oakland, Mayor Libby Shaft. Good morning. I understand I am the only thing between you and lunch. So I will try and be upbeat. And in fact, I probably can be more entertaining. If you have a handheld mic, I, I won't even stand behind the podium because I, I don't have notes. But I come, first of all, expressing my extreme gratitude to Mrs. Florence Fang. Uh, your leadership, your uh, global perspective, uh, not only helps us now, but will truly impact generations to come. We appreciate you so much. So, is this working? Good? Yes. All right. I got hold. Ni hao. When I grew up in Oakland, uh, you only had two language choices when you went to the public schools. Spanish or French. I'm happy to report that both of my children are studying Chinese in the Oakland Public Schools. Relationships are more natural between people than countries. And I want to talk about some of the same issues that Sean just kind of gave us this very uh, deep policy analysis on but more in kind of the gritty reality, person-to-person -person level that us mayors operate on. So when I talk about the opportunities in U.S.-Chinese relations, in education, in economic development and trade, in innovation, in climate change, I want to do that through the lens of my recent incredible trip that was so well supported by the Bay Area Council. Uh, I had never been to China until just last month, and it was an amazing experience. The warmth, the energy that each city and their officials put into welcoming our delegation was truly humbling. Now let me start with our sister city of Dalian. Uh, we have been sister cities with Dalian for 37 years, but the relationship had grown a little stagnant. And again, as not just a mayor, but also a mother, I really wanted to reinvigorate the student exchanges. I think that we all see so much hope in this new generation that recognizes that we are a global economy and no president with his misguided trade policies can actually, uh, it's like denying climate change. It's a reality, it's happening, get over it. <laughs> I think our young people know that. And so to be welcomed to a middle school in Dalian, to actually sit with students that are practicing calligraphy, to see a performance in the auditorium, and I must admit, I wish that uh, our middle school classrooms were a little more disciplined, like the Chinese version. I think it actually would be very good to have a cultural exchange of middle school students between Oakland and Dalian. But at the end of the day, both of our countries rely on talent, rely on a new generation of great thinkers. And I was pleased in talking to one of the party directors that he actually admired the American education system because he felt that sometimes the Chinese system was still too focused on memorization as opposed to creativity and problem solving. So see, we both have something to learn 
from one another. Let's take economic development. I also went with our interim port director and two of our port commissioners. We toured three different port facilities during our delegation's trip. And what I thought of was not so much the policies that our misguided president is putting into play. I thought about the workers that I know who live in Oakland that work at the Tesla factory and how their jobs are at stake if we cannot get component parts that ship through the port of Oakland to support good American jobs. The longshoremen that load the, the almonds and the wine that's made right here in California onto the ships bound for markets in Asia, in China. This is the type of policy that supports workers, that supports the economy in both of our countries. And in walking through the ports and seeing the workers in China, I was reminded of my workers at home. We share this interest. And then when it comes to innovation, uh, we visited uh, places that are uh, accelerators, looking for new uh, medicines, new medical procedures. When something is invented that saves a life in any country, all countries benefit. This is a life of our loved ones that could be saved because innovators in another country discover it. We know that this is good for all of us. And I saw this incredible work going on at accelerators in China. And then I will end with one of my favorite visits was to um, a turbine factory. This turbine factory um, outside of Guangzhou was not only making wind turbines that sit on land, but also offshore into the waterways. And they had a model where if they could receive an order for I think about 250 turbine uh, units, they would actually come to your location, to your country, set up the factory and train your workers from your country to actually produce these things. Now this is not just economic development, not just innovation, but this is climate change. And at the end of the day, so many of these issues, whether it's developing talent, whether it's curing diseases, whether it is addressing the devastating and rapidly advancing impacts of climate change, these issues don't care about national boundaries. We are all part of a global family. And this is what I saw as I traveled through China. And finally, I want to encourage more mayors to make these kinds of visits. When you sit down at the end of the day with another mayor, it's really about the people. It's not about press releases or campaign promises or slogans. In fact, I remember saying to one mayor, I am so impressed about there's no trash on your street. How do you manage all the garbage in your city? And we had this fascinating discussion about garbage collection. And I know Mina's in the uh, audience. You're probably the only other person that cares this much about garbage collection. All right, there are a few of you. But this, this is a real world issue. And the mayor chuckled and he said, they must have chosen your uh, driving route very carefully. <laughs> the, the more that we can have these kinds of exchanges, that remind us that at the end of the day, we struggle with the same problems. We have the same aspirations for our countries, for our communities, for our world. And that so many of the pressing problems really don't care about governmental boundaries. And so I just end by saying, on this 40th anniversary of US diplomatic relations with China. 
on this 70th anniversary of the People's Republic of China. And on this week where our government has launched a full-blown trade war against China. This is a time for us to remember especially that relationships begin with people. And so with that, I thank you all deeply for taking time out on your Saturday to be here together to strengthen what we know is a great relationship for both countries and indeed the whole world. Thank you.